Hey y'all, thanks for stopping by my channel. Everything in this video and all of my videos is for entertainment purposes only and based purely on speculation. I encourage you to do your own research and form your own conclusions. I hope you guys are having a great weekend so far. I am a little behind on my channel, but I did say in one of my last videos that I was going to share something that I just found odd, coincidental, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, I just thought I would share. And so basically, I want to first off say I am in no way saying that what I'm going to share in this video has anything to do with the Idaho 4. I typically, like most, don't believe in coincidence when it comes to true crime. But in this case, because it has nothing directly tied or has nothing to do with the Idaho 4, I do think that this is a coincidence. At least I would imagine it's a coincidence. Um, but, you know, there was talk a little bit about um, real life hunger games going on in Idaho. Um, and to be quite honest, at this point, nothing that goes on in that town of Moscow or Latah County or any of the surrounding areas, nothing would actually surprise me at this point. Seriously, legitimately, I am frustrated with this case. I am behind because I'm literally just lacking the motivation because of everything that I've seen, the way our justice system is playing itself out in this case. It's, in my opinion, not justice at all. It's a joke. Really, it's really sad. It's disheartening. But anyways, that's for another time. Um, so what I'm sharing with you guys, I will put the link in the description box. But it's basically just someone d um, explaining the movie, like a couple scenes from the movie Eyes Wide Shut. I personally have never even seen the movie. And I literally just stumbled across this and... When I started listening, other things were going through my mind, and I'm sharing those with you in this video, and I would love to know what you guys think. Again, just very coincidental and strange. I mean, I think I know the few of you who will 100% get this without me even needing to have said anything. Um, some of you will call me crazy, and that's okay. It won't be the first time, and it surely won't be the last time someone's called me crazy, but at least it's a good crazy. Um, anyways, guys, so don't go anywhere. I want you to check this out, and then please, at the end, be sure to do what you do. Hit the like. If you haven't, please do subscribe. If you like my content, check out the rest of my content, and I just want to say, because I've been lacking in motivation, that's why my part two of Sigma Chi Frat Boys has not come out because I just, I get that some of you totally are on the same page as me, but there's so many people that aren't. And it's, it's just hard when I feel like a lot of the work that's put into this is just going nowhere because people don't want to wake up. But I am kind of doing another quick video about that as well. And so those of you who are on the same page as me and y'all get it, I just love you guys. You are the best. You guys are doing great, great, great work. And hopefully one day we get some kind of clue as to what's really going on with this case and justice is actually served. That's all we can hope for, right? So anyways, guys, Enjoy the rest of your weekend. I appreciate each and every one of you guys so very much. And don't go anywhere. Tell me in the comments what you think or call me crazy. Thanks, guys. Well, I suppose you'd like the password. If you'd like, sir. Fidelio. Thank you, sir. We'll run you up to the house. One famous mafia rule is the rule called Omerta. And what is Omerta exactly? Well, it's generally thought of as a code of silence 
amongst a mafia crime group, for instance, so that you would never testify against anyone and that you would always be loyal, especially to your group and against all outsiders. And we might already see how that rule, Omerta, might relate to Red Cloak and the cult of Eyes Wide Shut. I've already stated in an earlier video that the cult is very protective of its members. And what with passwords being required to get inside the mansion, we can see that secrecy against outsiders or any unwanted guests is strictly enforced by this group. Now, let's look at what Red Cloak actually says in this scene with the Tom Cruise character. At first, Red Cloak asks Tom Cruise for the password, but when he doesn't have the correct one, and then says, I'm sorry, I seem to have forgotten it, he is called out by Red Cloak, who says, perhaps you never knew it, marking Tom as an outsider, an unwanted guest perhaps, someone who is not part of the group, or their codes of secrecy. But I warn you, if you make any further inquiries, or if you say a single word to anyone about what you have seen, there will be the most dire consequences for you and your family. That clip is very important as Tom is basically being sworn to an Omerta oath by Red Cloak. He is told in no uncertain terms that if he reveals anything he saw there that night, that there will be terrible consequences against him and his family. Though death was not mentioned by Red Cloak, it was in fact often the punishment for breaking Omerta in years past in the actual Mafia though not sure if it's still that way. Okay, so that mansion party ended on a very threatening note for Tom, but we can see he was told not to make any inquiries or say one word to anyone, an Omerta oath basically, of course, we see here that Tom in fact breaks the Omerta Oath literally the next day as he goes back to the mansion making inquiries which he was warned not to do and is given a note by a serious looking man. The note says, give up your inquiries and consider these words a second warning. Sorry about the sound guys on the video. I apologize, I just don't have time to try and fix this person's video and or figure out if it's me but about this note i want to say i thought kaylee was passed a note too until recently but i don't think she was passed a note anymore i think that she was holding her receipt with her phone but you guys be the judge i know that we've all seen this so many times and it's easy to find so y'all can go look for it if i don't happen to get that but read what i'm saying here because it's very very odd and right here is where I'm showing Kaylee holding the same thing that she was holding when Peyton walked up to her. The tone gets a bit more threatening as Tom walks home at night and seems to be getting followed by another serious looking guy. Was the guy sent by Red Cloak? Again, when Tom meets with Zegler and ends up talking about the mansion party, though Zegler obviously wanted to confront him, he's technically breaking the Omerta oath again, though Zegler claims he was at the mansion party, so not sure that counts as actually breaking the oath, since Zegler may be a member of the group. Finally, in the scene where Tom comes home to find his party mask on his bed, 
he breaks down and spills his guts to the Alice character saying, I'll tell you everything, I'll tell you everything. At this point, he really would be breaking his Omerta oath if he hasn't already. Will there be dire consequences? Last scene finds Tom and Alice in a toy store surrounded by teddy bears, Shades of the Shining. It's an odd scene because at one point their daughter seems to walk off with two men. Is she being kidnapped? Were they sent by the mansion cult? We aren't sure. And the parents seem a bit clueless, not even paying attention. So, to sum up, the mansion cult and their leader, Red Cloak, seem to operate under a code of secrecy and distrust of outsiders, very similar to the mafia code called Omerta, the code of silence, an Omerta oath at the party, and he's threatened not to break it, but he definitely does. So if a tree falls in the forest and there's no one to hear it, did it really fall? This is basically what the movie is asking. So if a fight occurred with the Idaho Four, drugs, money, everything else involved, all motives to harm, but no one claims to have seen it and no one talks about it, does that mean it simply didn't occur? This movie really is, from what I've read, all about, you know, taboo situations and how they're often ignored and I think that's a lot like with this case. It seems to me, at least in my opinion, many in this case and that, you know, even family members don't even want to consider the reality that there could be people, people who took their lives out there still just walking freely. And, you know, they don't want to admit that drugs or anything like that could have potentially been what led to some of this actually occurring. And that's not to victim blame. It's just reality, right? And I think people need to think outside the box more than they have in general. Just, you know, it's 2024. We can't just ignore things that we don't want to accept. And it seems to me that the town of Moscow and anyone involved or knows more than we know, knows the truth. Well, Seemingly, they went back to, like, this blissful ignorance right after the massacres. I mean, no one seems affected so quickly. Almost like they're trained to take the good and ignore the bad. I really find myself questioning why some of the bigger creators out here that actually have some influence on a lot of people with their following, like... They are just not even talking about Linda Lane, not even so much to even attempt to say it's all fake or botched or, you know, whatever, messed with footage. So why is that? Is that because it's not going to go along with what most people want to hear? I mean, isn't the truth what brings us to justice? So I don't know. That's just my personal thought. Thoughts and opinions. And aside from everyone surrounding this case, like that either lives there or law enforcement, whatever, it's just odd that people just literally went back to life as normal. I mean, am I the only one that thinks that that's strange? I mean, the, the siblings of Ethan go back to the fraternity. It's all weird, but I have a lot more to say on that different time, though. The video also depicted to me that I think most of us don't trust what happened here. And it's a good stopping point to say and realize that demons are all around us. And more often than not, they're in our own circle. So my question that this movie really kind of portrayed, if you watch the whole movie and that I read about quickly, is to those who have stayed silent and do know what actually did go down on November 13th, 2022, or to those that were involved, how much of your soul are you willing to lose? Or did you already lose it to be part of some club?
or brotherhood or sisterhood. I mean, at what point does one stop and say, something's not right here? What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Again, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And I'm excited to see what you guys think. Until next time, stay safe.